tell me just a little bit about your audition process for Batman. Sure. I've often wondered what that looked like. I know what the audition process looks like in general, and it can be difficult. It can be grueling. You can go to, you know, five or six or seven auditions, get to network, sit in a room full of 20 people, and think you've got the part, and then they say... Next. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about that audition process. I, I, I've, if, please. Okay. All right. Well, <clears throat> I had a unique situation. Uh, I was studying acting at UCLA, and I was also studying with a professional coach, one of the top guys in Hollywood. And um, But I was also helping my father on the weekends. He was a very prominent real estate broker in Beverly Hills. And I would do what they call sitting on houses on the weekend where you wait there and open house and people come in to look at the house. And and my father had like a group of 62 houses. So he couldn't be, at, you know, at very many and obviously in the course of a day. So I would help him. And one of the people that came in was a producer, a famous producer who ended up buying the house. And uh, I got to talk to him because, you know, I, I am engaging. I can talk to anybody, you know, <laughs> and, and uh we got talking and I told him what I wanted to do. And I asked him if he would watch a scene. And I actually did a scene for him. And he said, you know, you're, I, I think you've got a, a, a opera, you know, talent. And I think that, you know, I would like to try to help you. So I'm going to send you to an agent. So he gave me this agent's name. I contacted the agent. I went to see the agent. The first, and it was no big agency, just one little one or two man agency. And the first thing the man said to me, the agent was, I can't get work for the actors I've got. I never would have taken a new actor. Don't expect to work for a year. And if you get a job, you'll probably only get one sentence or one word. Okay, that was, all right, that's what he said to me. And I said, well, you know, and I was like, I left there like, wow. But it was about two or three weeks later, someone from his office called and said, uh, there's something over 20th Century Fox. Uh, we got an appointment for you to go over there tomorrow uh, afternoon. And they'll, you can drive onto the lot. They'll give you a parking place and they'll tell you, direct you where to go. So I did. And uh, when I went there, I was sent, uh, parked and went over to a, a bungalow, had no idea what the thing was. And uh, they said, okay, here, well, you want to meet the casting director? And I said, sure. Now, remember, I had never, ever tried out for anything in my whole life. I had been studying, but I never tried out, much less having done anything. So I have they this, given you a character breakdown or had they given no, you nothing, nothing. Wow. I, had, I just like we're talking now. So I started talking to the cast director and he said, would you like to meet the executive producer? I said, sure. I figured everybody got to meet the executive producer. Well, that's not true, but I didn't know that. So I go in to meet the executive producer and maybe because I hadn't been ever rejected, I hadn't been, you know, emotionally distraught over losing a role. I just walked in and and I said, hello, sir. And I shook his hand. And <laughs> William Dozier, you know, big executive producer. And he's like shocked, right? That somebody used to be so aggressive, but in a polite way still, but still aggressive, right? And he's looked at me, he said, well, you're kind of big for this part. I said, oh, I promise you, sir, I won't grow anymore, right? Well, how can you promise <laughs> it but you're not going to grow? But he laughed, you know, he said, would you like to do a screen test? They said, sure. I figured everybody got to do a screen test. Well, that's not true either, but wow. I didn't know that. So uh, it was arranged for me to do a screen test. I had no idea what the part was. So I go in to, the, to where they do the screen test. And the first thing they wanted to see is some athletic. Well, at the time I was a brown belt in karate. So I did some stuff and I broke a board with my hand. And uh, then they said, okay, we want you to do some dialogue. We have another actor here and we want you to do some dialogue. I said, okay. So they handed me a single piece of paper. On that paper, it had Bruce, not Bruce Wayne, Bruce and Dick, with each one having some dialogue. Okay, nothing about Batman, nothing about Gotham City, nothing that you, other than just regular conversation. So they introduced me to this actor, Adam West, and I sat down in the, and in the first five minutes of talking, we was about 15 minutes we had a chance before we actually did anything. He and I started laughing after five minutes. We never stopped laughing for 50 years, okay? I mean, we got along instantly so well. So here we did this dialogue and they said, okay, fine, thank you very much. I said, okay, uh, nice to meet you all. I started to leave, they said, wait, whoa, whoa, we're not done with you yet. I, I said, oh, you have something else? Yes, we want you to go over to the other side of the sound stage. There is a wardrobe trailer and there's going to be two wardrobe men there to help you get dressed. I said, wow. well, 
thank you very much, but I'm fully capable of dressing myself. No, oh, no, no. <laughs> you don't know. No, you just go over there. You'll see. So I go over to this trailer. I go into this trailer and it's, it's a typical trailer that has a, it, it looks like a, a double couch or triple couch. It's huge. And on this couch, all over this couch are clothes. And I said, am I going to put some of this on? They said, no, you're going to put all of it on. I said, what? Well, <laughs> they helped me get into this outfit. The most uncomfortable thing in my entire life. Everything hurt, itched, rub the, the mask, rub my eyelashes, irritated them. Okay. And plus I couldn't see other than straight ahead. I couldn't see down. I mean, you have, you're going to have to step down to get out of the trailer. All of these things, right? The tights. Man was not built for tights. Oh, really. yeah. All right. Anyway, all of this stuff. So I, I don't even know how to move. It's like I, I, everything, if I move anything, everything hurts, doesn't feel good. So I, I started to hobble out of that trailer. And I thought for a minute, I turned around to these two wardrobe guys. I said, look, the good news here is that after another 15 or 20 minutes, I'll never have to wear this horrible costume again. <laughs> <laughs> Famous last words. Oh, but so not true. So, right. But who knows, right? So then I go in the set and there is Adam, and he's in another costume. You have to understand, where I grew up, there wasn't a Batman comic book. There was yeah. Superman, but no Batman. I never heard of Batman. And even when I saw him, I, I thought, well, maybe this is some Shakespearean piece or something we're going to be right. doing. I mean, what, what is this? And, and whatever it was. So then they said, yeah, I did this stuff, and I left. And it was about six weeks later, okay? And during the six weeks, I would get phone calls. Um, after the first or after the second week, I'd get a call from the studio say, oh, well, what's your shoe size? Oh, well, um, oh, seven and a half. Oh, uh, what's your hat size? Oh, I, I don't know. I don't wear a hat. Well, go get your head measured. Well, where do I go to get my head measured? You know, <laughs> I mean, real life kinds of questions, right? And, and yeah. after a month, I got called into the agency. They said, oh, we want to sign some contracts with you. I said, great. I said, now they're going to formally represent me. So I go in and I sit down and when I look at the contract, it doesn't have the name of the agency. It says 20th Century Fox. I said, well, what's this? Wow. They said, that's your contract. Oh, well, I thought mm -hmm. I was signing agency contract. No, no, you, your studio. You mean I got the part? In, you mean the studio didn't tell you? that Nobody you, had no. told you. And then when I got to the studio, they couldn't believe that the agents. So for four of the six weeks, I had the role and had no idea. And the agent wow. said, I told you I'd get your work. Wow. Now, one That's more thing really I want to add. Story. I want to add one more thing. Um, when I met the executive producer again, William Dozier, he was very nice to me. He said, Bert, would you like to know why we selected you to play this part? I said, yes. Yes, I would. He said, first of all, we interviewed 1,100 young actors for this role. Wow. 1,100. That's a lot of competition. And That's he said, the reason we selected you is forgetting television if there really was a robin i mean the real thing we think that you burt ward person would be it so we don't want you to take on an acting role we actually want you to be exactly be yourself and be enthusiastic and that's all we want that's what i did for 120 episodes well, you do personify robin i mean anytime i think yeah. of robin we think of you well Absolutely. You, very high so energy so we, we and we had so much fun on the set because I was never directed how to say a line ever. And I and I have a, a, a kind of trivia story for you. At after the event where I got the star in Hollywood Boulevard last year, we had this party around the corner at the Hollywood Museum. And one of the people that came to the party, his name is Robert Butler. He was the director of the pilot episode of Batman. And he told me a story that for 55 years I had never heard. And here's the story. He said that when he was hired to, to do this, and they said to him, we've hired this young kid, they call me a kid, a young kid to play Robin. And he's never done anything. And we don't know if it's going to work or not. So we want you to pull him aside, go talk to him, see if you can work with him. Okay. And I re do remember, it was on the first day on the set that, you know, he called me aside. He said, oh, can I talk to you for a few minutes? They said, sure. Right. And he and I talked, and he told me that night, that or that afternoon after I'd gotten my star on Hollywood Boulevard, that he went back to the producers and said, the kid is fine. 
I'm not going to direct him to do anything. You don't mess when something is is perfect the way it is. Right. I'm leaving leaving the kid alone. Let him do what he does. So as an example of something I did, again, remember, I hadn't been on a set. I hadn't worked in front of a camera. On the first episode, Batman and Robin drive up to this warehouse. And instead of jumping or opening the door and getting out of the car, I was always jumping in and out of the car. But I decided to do something different. Instead of getting out of the uh, out of through the door, I stood up on the door, walked to the tail on, on the tail fin all the way to the back and jumped off. Right. And I heard the directors say, cut, cut. And I, you can't do that. I said, what do you mean? Well, I mean, you, if you're going to do that, you have to tell us because we're, we're our cameras aimed for you coming out the door. You got to tell us. Right? They said, but, you know, the, this Robert Butler said, but actually it looks so good. We're going to take a half an hour and lay some crack down. And they got the, and they, they dollied with me going back and jumping off. But it was that I did whatever I felt was right. And they got to the point where, Bert, can we have a quick rehearsal? Only because they were so worried I'm going to do something that they were unexpected. And then it's going to take them time to go reset up and relight and do all of that stuff. So that's how it worked. But Adam and I were never told how to do our lines. We had a chemistry that, uh, let me tell you, the he two really of did. us, he did. It, it really worked. And Adam used to say, that we put on our tights to put on the world. We're the only superheroes to wear our underwear on the outside of our clothes. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Yeah, I actually have met him a couple of times and he's, he, he would be, I would imagine, be great to work with. Hilarious. And, and unpredictable. The chemistry between you. Yeah. Highly unpredictable. Okay. Yes. You never know. I mean, he, he would, he could really mess up other actors because he would do his dialogue sometimes stilted. Uh, and, and another thing he did, he, he was very smart. He realized this was only a 30 minute show, right? So if he talked really slowly during his lines, that camera would have to be on him, right? On him. So, so he's <laughs> very smart. Right. So, so, so here's what would happen. I would have, I mean, he would have a paragraph and I, and I say a, a line like you're right, Batman. And, and then he would continue. And I would, you know, he'd say this long drawn out thing and I'm like, like, Oh my God. You know, <laughs> And, and then I would have my line and I'd say, you're right. Yes, Robin. No, he would cut in on my, I wouldn't even get my, you're right, Batman out. And then the director would say, no, wait a minute, Adam. You got to let Bert get his line out, right? Then the other thing. Well, you should have to... said, you're uh, yeah. right, <laughs> Batman. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. You, you can't do that, though, because my character is high <laughs> energy, right? And, he, you know, and as, and as high energy I am, he is that way, this very stoic. I mean, Adam was like the actor. He wanted the old time actors that had their tea at four o'clock in the afternoon. And he thought of himself in grand ways, like like he was Winston Churchill. I mean, he was I mean, a thespian. He, he, he saw these great things. You know, I you remember one time he said to me, you know, there's the three B's. I said, what are the three B's? Bond, Beatles and Batman. You know, <laughs> the three. Bond, I love Beatles. that. And, and so that kind of stuff that we had. But. We had, we had a great time. The, uh, I didn't want to say one funny thing he would do. We would have a two shot where the camera set on the two of us. And then at a certain point, he would turn and come up to the camera and fill that camera so full that all you could see was his mouth on that camera. They said, Adam, you can't do that. This is a two That's shot. Funny. Get back there. He said, I had to do it. Oh, well, why did you have to? Because I was motivated. Oh, my. I mean, he would pull all of this stuff on them. And, and he was, but he was, he, and he was funny in his own way and he was so charming and he and I yeah, could he sit was there very and charming. laugh together off the set. We, we played tennis on the weekend. We were really friends. Mm, that's so nice. And now for uh, the show to have only run really for two years from 1966 to three years, years to, for, right. to 1969. Eight. Yeah. Eight. Sprite all of 66 years. all of 67 67 and 68 right you know it was such a huge phenomenon plus a couple of movies right plus a couple of movies why do you think that it got canceled when it did money all about money it was losing money um think of it this way we had all these effects on the show you know these uh, giant birthday cakes and this exploding and this and that and instead of having a crew of about 30, which is a normal crew, at points we had a crew that of 80 people working on that. And, and almost all of them were involved with trying to get these effects to work. And as I understand it, 
And this is back in 1966, 67, 68, where the dollar was, you know, um, I mean, uh, they were losing like $300,000 an episode. And, wow. and over over, over 20, 120 episodes at 300,000 an episode. Well, they finally got to a point where they had enough shows in, you know, that they could rerun them forever. And, and interestingly, when shows are rerun, they're usually sold in blocks of a year, six months or a year. Uh, Batman was so popular. We were number one and number two in the entire world at the time that our show was sold in blocks of 25 years. In other words, if you wanted, if you were stationed and wanted to rerun, you had to sign up for 25 years to on Batman. Wow. Yeah. That's... I, I heard and a long time ago that like every star who was anybody in Hollywood wanted to be a villain on Batman. Exactly. And they weren't enough roles. Oh, yeah. everybody. Listen, so here's what they came Vincent up Price. with. They had a great idea. Yeah, Vincent Price, he played Egghead. But here's what they came up with. Because there was only so many roles, right? Uh, they ha came up with the thing of Batman and Robin climbing up the outside of a building and a window would open. And the first one was Sammy Davis Jr. Right. And right. then there was right. Jerry Lewis, Don Ho, Colonel Clink. Uh, I mean, there was just Betty White, every, uh, everybody that could, and, and even those weren't enough opportunities. More people wanted to be on. It was the number one and number two show in the entire world. Uh, it was, it was the, the, we would make an appearance. In fact, when the show aired, we, well, we did a first Batman movie that came out a few months after the show aired. And we went, we were trying to go to 36 theaters in New York in three days. We had a bus, 17 police on the bus, anywhere from 100 to 150 police at each theater, just, you know, holding back the crowds. And even so, I got my 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 costume torn like three or four times in wow. trying three days. And we, and we could only go to 33 theaters. What they would do is that we would go in. They'd stop the movie that was playing Batman. We would come out on the stage. And I'm telling you, people were like, oh, you yeah. just Adam's right. You were the Beatles. Team of the number of people that reacted to Batman. Oh, watch and listen to new episodes of The Coriolis Effect with me, Corey Oliver, every Tuesday and Thursday on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and most other podcast distribution apps. We have fascinating guests from the entertainment, business, music, faith, and other industries who talk about their lives, opinions, beliefs, and upcoming projects. That's The Coriolis Effect with me, Corey Oliver. Hi guys, I'm Corey Oliver, and thank you for watching The Coriolis Effect. We hope you enjoyed the previous episode. Here are some more episodes you might enjoy. Hit the subscribe button below, and have a great day.